Howdy dudes and dudettes. Welcome back to Duty's Daggers. We have a knife review today. It's time. It's time to review the Hinderer XM18 3.5 inch. Um, I kind of thought about not reviewing this knife just because uh, it holds a very special place in my heart. And um, I might not be able to uh, give it an unbiased review because I love it so much. Um, but I think we're going to do it anyways. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that I can, uh, I can freely say that could be improved or I wish were different. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to review this thing. You know, it's, uh, it's been reviewed a million times probably, if not, you know, probably thousands of times realistically. Um, so it's not like anyone is looking for a review from me for, for the XM18, but, uh, you know, maybe uh, some of you want to hear my opinion on it. And uh, I'm going to give it to you. So, first, let's measure this zombie. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Um, so, like I said, it's a three and a half inch blade. This is the uh, Hinderer XM18 three and a half inch. Uh, it also comes in a three inch bladed version which is uh, obviously just a little smaller than this one. Uh, not as popular, uh, the three-inch versions. Um, not sure exactly why. Um, I've never handled one. This is the only hinderer I've ever handled, by the way. So um, if you're looking to uh, hear a comparison uh, between this hinderer and other hinderers, then I'm not the guy for that. Um, I'll be comparing this to a lot of other knives that I've handled, but uh, not other hinderers specifically. Um, we have an overall length. It's going to be longer than my ruler. It's going to be around eight and a quarter inches overall. It's a big knife. And closed, we have. Boom. If you measure up to this corner here, we have four and uh, three quarters. If you measure kind of to the middle right here, it's like four and five eighths. Uh, big knife. Definitely a big knife. How about some size comparisons, folks? Let's do uh, the the uh, you know the usual suspects here. Let's get out the old Spyderco Paramilitary Two, which is um, you know what? Let's see here. I want to see. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same size, actually. Yeah, almost exactly the same size in length as the XM18, and then let's do Spyderco Native 5, there you go, and um, the classics, Spider or <laughs> Ontario Rat Model 2, and Civivi Elementum, obviously, bigger than those two. And then uh, some more premium-ish guys. We have the Demco 8020.5 Shark's Foot. And the Devo Knives Mash. There you go. Um, this knife was bigger than I thought it would be. You know, you, you look at the measurements online and um, you say, okay, that's pretty big. But until you get it in hand, you don't really understand how exactly how big it is, um, and it's quite big. Um, I think the the one thing that I was initially kind of surprised at when I unboxed this, and I'll pin the unboxing video uh, right up in the corner here, because I was uh, I was flipping out in that video. It's pretty. It's probably pretty entertaining to watch, <laughs> but I was so excited. Um, the, the, I think the very first thing that struck me when I first laid eyes on this thing was the handle looks big in comparison to the blade. Um, I never really got that looking at the pictures. Um, it's not something that bothers me because, uh, well, number one, it just doesn't visually bother me, but ergonomically, this handle is just unbelievably comfortable. Insanely comfortable. Um, so... It's not a bad thing, but it just kind of struck me that the, the handle seemed bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, 
So let's talk about, um, well, actually, you know what? Let's measure the thickness behind the edge first because, um, you know, hinders are known to be pretty thick behind the edge. Um, pe sometimes people get them reground um, to get them a little bit thinner. Um, I think I measured, last time I measured this, I think it wasn't even as thick as my griptilian, though. Let's see. Let's see, we got... 27 thousands back there. Up here we have 25. Up here is going to be really thick. Um, 28 thousands. The Benchmade Griptilian was like 27, um, which is crazy. So this is actually, this is right around, well, yeah, it's right around Griptilian um, thickness behind the edge. Just pretty thick. Um, you know, this thing still will slice well. Um, one thing I noticed when I put it on the fixed angle sharpening system, I was sharpening it up at like, let's see, I have it right here, like 28 degrees. <clears throat> so that, that stone was coming at a very high angle down, meaning these bevels are not very wide. Um, you know, if you wanted it to be even more slicey, you probably could even set that down to like, I don't know. 26 maybe or something like that and widen the bevel a little bit but you have this area here where it transitions um, up into what he calls the spanto this is the spanto blade shape um, it's it's kind of like a, it's a little bit of a tanto where there's it's, it's almost a compound grind so you have this area here where the bevel thickens right where they transitions right there so i don't think you want to get that too much wider so maybe it's fine as it is um you know, it totally slices just fine. Um, in fact, um, <clears throat> let me get some paper here. And we'll check it out. So, yeah, slice is totally fine. It's just, it could be it could be a lot slicier. Um, and that's why some people get these reground. Uh, personally... I don't care. Um, I'm not hard, gonna be hard using this knife um, at all. This is something that I'm gonna save and and keep very nice because uh, it's um, it's incredible. I, I love it that much. You know, um, you don't have to use all your knives. I have a lot of knives I use. This one is one that I do not. Um, so let's talk about the uh, the construction of this knife. When you buy it from a retailer. They come with uh, a G10 show side scale, meaning this scale right here. I have the uh, one it came with right here. This one came with a uh, JG10 scale and a titanium liner underneath that. So it was on there just like this. So that's very nice. Titanium liners are fantastic. Uh, brings the weight down. Um, they look nicer, I think, than uh, stainless steels. You know, even just the, the little part that you can see showing uh, on the edges looks nicer. Um, so that's great. But if you want to have a full titanium hinderer like I do, you order a titanium scale for it. Now, this is um, the textured titanium uh, scale made by hinderer. This is not um, a third-party um, scale. This is from hinderer, uh, and it's their working finish. So... Um, there's two types of finishes they have on these textured titanium scales. There is the the regular, I guess. It's a little bit more shiny, and then the working finish, which is darker. Um, I think it contrasts nice with the blade. Um, I almost wish I had gotten the more shiny one. Uh, if you're familiar with Metal Complex's Hinderer collection, he has the shiny ones. Um, this is the same scale. It's just the working finish, so it's a little bit darker. Um, but I, I like it. I might someday switch to that that more uh, high polished one, but um, right now I'm fine. And these are very hard to come by. Um, they drop on the hinderer site and they're almost immediately gone. Um, so it, they're hard to get. And they're 200 bucks. That's the other thing, man. Um, this is a very expensive knife. Um, you know, I got it uh, like new in box, but it was second hand. So I paid uh, 380 bucks for this, and with the scale, that's 580 bucks. But if it, if this was new, they're 425 new. So that's 650 bucks if you want this uh, 
ta- you know, texture and titanium skill. Um, that's a sh- sh- shit ton of money. It's a lot of money, dude. Uh, um, yeah, it's a lot. But if you're a knife enthusiast and you really like hinderers, that won't be a problem for you. You will you will pay that and you will love the knife, which um, which is what I did. There are a few different blade shapes that you get on the XM18. This is the Spanto. Uh, there's the slicer grind. There's the spear point. Uh, there's a few more. There's a lot of different variations of it too. Um, you can get the XM18 with a fuller right here and a no and no flipper tab. You can get them uh, with no choil, just a flipper. Uh, there's there's a bunch of different versions. This is a um, I don't know if it's a more popular one. I think probably the slicer grind might be the most popular one, but the Spanto here is close. Um, it's it's a it's a fairly popular one. Um, I like it. Um, I probably I don't know. I, I might you know I don't know. I like it, but I think my next hinder would probably be the slicer grind. Um, this uh, this is really meant for uh, you know having a nice. Uh, thick tip um for you know if you're doing a lot of work with the the tip of your knife this kind of thickens it up so that you don't have to worry about it breaking um you know it's thinner back here for slicing thicker up here for you know doing any kind of uh, stuff with the tip um so that's that's kind of the the benefit of this spanto blade shape um so that's this uh side scale the other side is a stonewashed titanium um looks really nice we have um, a two-way uh, reversible, not reversible, two-way uh, interchangeable pocket clip, so you can have tip up or down. Um, and you have a filler tab in whatever place the clip is not, you have a little filler tab. Now, I have a special one. It's called a Rick's Special Project Filler Tab. And uh, I just bought it, or I bought it a while ago, and it just came in the mail, and I really like it. Um, it's got a little horse head and a horseshoe on it. Um, that little tiny thing of titanium was, uh, uh, 35 bucks out the door. Um, so that's pretty expensive for a little piece of titanium, but it's really cool. And they're, uh, they're a very limited amount of them. So I had to get one. Kind of just, uh, makes this even more special. Now I also have uh, blue some blue hardware coming I got blue barrel spacers and blue nuts so these three nuts will be blue and these barrel spacers will be new uh, blue and that's it I'm not gonna get a blue clip I'm not gonna get a blue pivot so I'm not gonna do anything else just a little bit of hint of blue back here and this side's gonna be completely monochrome and I think uh, that will be an awesome awesome looking hinderer so, um, I'll talk really quick about why this is so special. I know I've talked about it uh, a few times before, but basically, you know, I started collecting knives um, a few years ago, and uh, ever since I very first started collecting knives, I came across videos of hinderers. Saw pictures of them online, you know, um, just saw them around the community online, and um I just I fell in love with uh, with them, with, you know, since the first time I saw them. Uh, when I found out how much money they were, I thought, well, there's absolutely no way, no possible way, I'll ever have one of those. <laughs> um, and uh, that was kind of my thinking for a, a while, until uh, recently, in the past, only like the past year or so, I realized that. You know what? I can get one. I just have to save up my money and maybe sell a few other knives and um I'm just going to go for it, you know? Um uh, part of it wasn't uh you know, it wasn't all financial. Part of it was like you know, I I couldn't decide if I wanted to spend that much money on a knife. Uh you know, the first time you spend over whatever, you know, 200 bucks on a knife, it's a it's a huge deal. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't really decide for a little while if it was really justified. And uh, in the end, I decided it was absolutely justified <laughs> as my uh, addiction progressed. And um, yeah, here I am sitting with this knife that I I coveted for so so long, and um, finally saved up and got. So that's why it's so special. Um, just the fact that I I wanted it so so badly for so long. 
and um, and I finally have one. So that's why it's so special. I'll never sell this knife. I'll probably get more hinders somewhere in the you know the future years, but um, this one will never go anywhere. I'm I love it. I absolutely love it. So we talked a little bit about the construction. Um, the clip here is not deep carry. In fact, it is like really not deep carry. You have kind of this whole point sticking out of your pocket. Uh, but you know what? That's kind of the charm of the hinderer. Um, there are some things on this knife that um, are a little unconventional as far as, you know, what we've come to expect in pocket knives. You know, we all want deep carry clips. Uh, but, I, you know, you can get a deep carry clip for this knife. There are companies that make deep carry clips, but it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right on the knife. Um, this knife is just meant to have this clip because it looks perfect on it, you know? Um, so you just deal with it. It's not that big a deal. It sticks out a little bit, creates a nice thing for you to grab and pull it out. So whatever. Um, aside from that, the clip does work really well. It doesn't get caught up on this lock bar relief cut. Um, speaking of the lock bar relief cut, we have some, uh, some kind of cool milling underneath there. You kind of see some lines milled into there. Um, really cool. There's a lot of really cool milling going on here, especially on the lock side. I mean, you know, the textured titanium on the show side, obviously, this is amazing. This is amazing machining here. Um, but there's a little bit more interesting stuff going on on the lock side. We have Hinderer milled in uh, right up here, right there. Um, we have um, this uh, lock bar relief cut, you know, line, nice lines milled into there. We have jimping milled in all on this lock bar here, on the flipper tab, some jimping down here, some back there, and up top here on the spine and on the um, both scales there. Um, you know, this little pocket milled out for the filler tab where the, the clip goes. Um, just a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff to look at. You have the Triway Pivot System logo right there on the flipper tab. I'll explain what that is here in a minute if you don't know. Um, so that's the, uh, the lock bar side. Um, yeah, that's the basic construction of the thing. Uh, all titanium, just beautifully, beautifully made. Um, everything's big, thick, and, uh, and just beefy. These, these barrel spacers are just huge. Um, you know, big pivot. Love it. Everything's big and big and brutal. Um, so ergonomics, like I said, unbelievably comfortable unbelievably comfortable choked back um, these flipper tab while it is kind of not the best uh, as far as comfort flipping it in the closed position it curls up like that um, it's worth it because in the open position it curls down and creates this very comfortable little finger guard sort of area in here where you feel uber uber locked in it's almost like f uh, holding a um, a dagger with a, a cross guard on it. That's what it feels like because this is protecting your finger and you're you're pushed up against it. You feel very locked in. Um, choked back, unbelievably comfortable. Now, this knife has a choil and you can choke up, which I love to do on my knives. And it's unbelievably comfortable up here as well. Um, honestly, just as comfortable as being choked back. It's crazy. Instead of your pointer finger, you know, sitting in the guard position, your middle finger gets in there, your pointer finger goes in this nice roomy choil, you're not touching the, the uh, edge of the blade there at all, it's comfortable, it's roomy, it's very, very comfortable. So um, ergonomics, it's a 10. Honestly, it's a 10. No hot spots. Unbelievably comfortable. And, um, you know, honestly, I didn't expect that. I was surprised, you know, it looks beefy and chunky and it looks like it might have sharp edges. Um, it does not. It absolutely does not. Um, it's a 10, ergonomically a 10. Um, so that's the ergonomics. Not much to say. They're just fantastic. Um, action. So the first time I opened this knife and took it out of the box, I went to flip it. That's what I did. <laughs> well, I didn't do that. I, I failed it because I wasn't used to it. Now, after I did it once, it's easy to flip out. But, you know, it kind of, it, you know, 
it feels like it's a weak detent, but that's only because you have such a large flipper tab with such leverage and such a heavy blade that it feels kind of weak. But to prove my point, watch the thumb stud action. Like it, it absolutely flies out with the thumb studs. So um, I think that's just because, like I said, the shape of the flipper tab, you have so much leverage, you can like, you can like just put so little pressure on it that um, you can fail it easily. But I mean, you know, there's absolutely a strong detent in there. Um, so it's just the heavy blade and this this big old flipper tab, I think, is why. Um, I honestly like thumb flicking this thing best of all um, using the thumb studs. It's very, very fun to flick out. You can reverse flick it too. Um, so action, while it does take a second to get used to the flipper tab, I think it's excellent. I really think it's excellent. Um, I wasn't expecting to be able to use the thumb studs either. So, um, before I had this knife, I had the ZT0562, which is ZT's version of this knife. Um, you know, shank, <laughs> sanctioned, sanctioned by Hinderer himself to make, you know, to ZT, to make the, the their version of the XM18. Um, but theirs are just stop pins, external stop pins. They do not also serve as thumb studs. These stick out further. The ones on the 0562 are, are much closer to the blade. And as you can see, they are the stop pins. So in the open position, travels up. These two thumb studs and also stop pins make contact with the scale here on both sides. And that stops the blade from overextending back this way. Every knife has one, but they're just usually back in here. Um, on the XM18, they're on the outside. Um, and on the 0562, the ZT version that I had, um, they didn't make them pop out enough to also be used as thumb studs. So I was very pleasantly surprised when I got this knife to learn that I could thumb flick it. Super duper cool. Um, yeah. Speaking of the external stop pins, um, this just adds a, a lot more strength to the lockup of the knife. You know, um, on, um, let's see, where's my example? On a typical um, knife, you can see the stop pin is right back here, this post. Um, the blade opens, and there's a little uh, slot in the tang. It hits that, and it keeps it from overextending. So it's just one surface contacting another surface. This, there's much more surface area here being in contact between the blade and the scales. So um, not only is it more secure, it helps side-to-side -side play because you have both on either side. Um, it's just a very secure and... Um, uh, tough way to do your stop pins so i really like that i love that they also double as thumb studs um whoops almost dropped it Hoo -hoo -hoo. actually <laughs> i dropped this right before filming and it fell and landed right on my laptop and i haven't opened it up to see if it's okay yet the laptop obviously this is okay um but this is pretty heavy so i don't know could have damaged the screen we'll see um speaking of Weight, it's pretty heavy. Um, you know, doesn't stop me from carrying it. I stick this in my pocket just fine, but uh, yeah, it is pretty heavy. You know, it's a big knife, thick pieces of titanium. You know, obviously lighter than it would be if this was all stainless steel. It'd be extremely heavy. But even being titanium, it's still pretty heavy. Um, Lockup is absolutely and totally rock solid. Um, the action is incredible. This version, uh, or th not this version, this particular knife has um, skiff bearings installed into it. Um, but honestly, I don't even, I'm not even sure that they need them. Um, my buddy Jason just got a brand new um, Hinderer Eclipse, and his is almost just as drop shut as mine. Um, brand new out of the box with the, uh, the bearings that it comes with. Um, this might be a little bit more readily dropping shut than his um but i mean right out of the box they do come extremely smooth um speaking of the pivot here we have the triway pivot system which you can see the, uh, the emblem right there that means that um, you can choose what type of 
uh, you know, thing you want in the pivot. You can have bearings, you can have phosphor bronze washers, or you can have Teflon washers. Um, depending on the type of work you're doing, what you're doing with the knife, you might want some other type of bearing uh, or spacer in there. Um, you know, if you are doing a lot of work in, uh, maybe you're a welder like I am, um, you have a lot of little metal metal dust in the air getting everywhere, you might want some phosphor bronze washers because it will resist that type of um, dust getting inside there. Um, me, if I were taking this to work, I would definitely have the phosphor bronze in it. Um, but this is just a uh, carry on the weekends sometimes and, um, and look and admire and treasure it. So I'm fine with the bearings and getting this insane dropping shut action. Let's see. What am I forgetting? This is a pretty long one. I guess there's a lot to talk about on this knife. Um, the hardware. So this is a small nitpick with the knife. Um, there's a lot of different hard, you know, uh, bits that you need to get this knife apart. These are, I think, Allen uh, keys um, hardware here. This one you need like a, you can do a flat headed screwdriver. I use a penny. And then this side you need a spanner. Um, I actually use a penny that I cut a little notch out of and it works just fine. And then the clip is a regular Phillips head. Um, so you need three different uh, bits to take this knife apart. Not a huge deal, you know. Um, I think you really only ever probably have to adjust the pivot on the go. Um, and in that case, you just get, get a penny and you're fine. Um, but, you know, kind of cool if they made it all one one uh, you know thing. But then you wouldn't get this cool looking uh, pivot with this uh, slot in it. I think it looks cool. And this side looks cool too. So, yeah, I'm fine with it. It really doesn't bother me. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Hinderer XM18. Oh, the blade steel. S45VN, baby. My favorite, favorite blade steel. Awesome. I think they make all the new XM18s uh, with S45VN now. Used to be 20CV. And now I think they're doing all S45VN. Uh, this is completely and totally made in the USA. Um, another cool thing about it, um, yeah, that's the Hinder XM18. There is a lanyard slot back there if you want that, but um, it's out of the way. I love it. I hardly even notice it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it was informative. Um, go watch my unboxing of this knife. I think you'll uh, you'll get a kick out of it. I was just <laughs> I was unbelievably uh, excited and just uh, losing my shit. So, um, like I said, I'll put it up in the corner there. I'll do it again right now so you don't forget to watch it. And uh, thanks for uh, for hanging out. Like the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know in the comments if you own a hinder, if you want to own a hinder someday, or if you just, you know, the design isn't really for you. Uh, I'm curious to know. And um, I love you guys very much. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Adios.